Hi, my name is Saika Caro and I make the impossible possible. We're going to talk today about the Soul Foundation Symposium on UAPs and UFOs, aliens, ETs, etc. Now, this is uh, Gary Nolan from Stanford bringing in people like Riz Verk, other academics that are coming uh, to San Francisco to begin to talk about the way forward. What, what think tank uh, needs to be in place so that um, we can influence the conversation both within the government, the military, and beyond companies as well. So it's kind of an interesting premise because here we tend to think as citizens that most of the knowledge around UAPs and uh, uh, extraterrestrials is already housed in the government and housed um, in companies and we're scratching our head going, why haven't you shared the information? So it's an interesting situation uh, that they are asking to, to do, um, say, hey, why don't we fund academics? Why don't we fund other people that are not academics uh, that, that are doing research, which was interesting. Um, and how do we, I guess, influence the conversation? So I think that's very important. You know, a lot of people are saying, why would you have a think tank and give them information when there's all this broken trust going on? My philosophy is that we're all one. Um, we make up the government, we make up companies, and we make up society. So if we want to influence the broader conversation, uh, then it's important to play in all fields, influence all people, in, you know, and, and have the conversation. Now, uh, one of the things that they want to do is protect whistleblowers. They want to have they want to have funding basically and i think that this is important for the world to understand where if we are going into this paradigm which it seems like we are where all of a sudden the border is not the border you know there's all these galaxies and all these other things to think about um dimensions even consciousness how do we form the best outcomes so i wanted to talk about today their premise what they're doing uh, and also talk about what I would do with a think tank um, for this kind of research. So again, um, my stance is that, you know, like, well, LightNet built a, a think tank for contact. And we looked at how do people make contact, right? The more people that make contact, the better stories, points of view we have. And we know that um, Ray Hernandez studied a bunch of people who made contact. We're talking hundreds of people from hundreds of countries. And what he realized was that um, people generally have 50, more than 50% have a miracle healing. He, he recognized the benevolence and grace and interesting um, impact that these that these have had. He also looked at how people did it, uh, and then later his next book is is how the whole phenomenon is consciousness based. So we're being asked to look at consciousness as well in this whole mix. So what would I do? So as as you know, we're a nonprofit. We're citizen science, so we're not in academia. Uh, we don't want to be in academia. Uh, it's been moving a little too slowly, and there's a lot of people that are really brilliant that are not going to be in academia <laughs> um, because they've already graduated academia. You know, Stanford's actually talking about how do we move people into those positions or let people do gap years or or have them come back after their industry experience. And I think this Soul Foundation is also talking about how do we pay of researchers that are not part of academic um, tra traditional systems, they're not professors, ex or they're not students, um, but they are doing research. So how do we pay them to, to advance the, um, the information? But back to what I would do. So one of the things I would do, aside from creating an open data commons, which we have where we have a lot of different contact um, reports, um, from MUFON, from all these different sources, from the stuff we gathered, Mark Sims, all these different convergences, it's good to have a place to put the data so that people can access it and make different conclusions. 
Uh, so that's important. Uh, we also are creating a reporting system. We have created a reporting system that allows people to put in contact, but at a much deeper level than um, would be in, in MUFON, where you're just saying, I saw a cigar shaped craft. We know that contact can happen Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just saying I saw a craft because we know that contact can happen um, in hypnosis, in dreams, in altered states, in all these different ways and those also have to be understood, right? If we're going to really grapple with this. One of the things I would do from a cultural perspective, and this is, seems to be something that the Soul Foundation is interested in doing, is saying, okay, um, how is this going to impact our culture, our religions, our law, like what is, does it mean when we have these visitors here? So one of the things I would do is um, top 20 questions. So though this feels like um, a sensationalistic Thing. Um, if you've ever been to a big Paris or European or even um, US um, board where they have all the destinations, Frankfurt, whatever, and they have the times they're leaving, right? So it's a constantly changing board. Sometimes they flick over or sometimes it's a computer. It'd be interesting to know what the world's top questions are for ETs, right? Because these questions are all something that everyone might have an opinion on that are out there researching this already. So in addition to rank sorting questions, which would be a simple website or social media or even a physical thing, um, these things would go up and down um, and they would also link to responses. Um, this could be set up with Coria or another organization, even Reddit, to host these 20 questions and, and so, you know, create a summary of, of our current thoughts. Now, um, we can also have the a dream machine. Now, this is um, something that obviously we're very close to at Light Night since we're building it, but it's, it's the best case scenario planning, right? So what does the dream machine look like for us? What is our best case scenario? We spend so much time <laughs> researching the worst case scenario. So what could go wrong? Um, what do we have to do? You know, defense is this, that, whatever. But what about, what about tracking with a hundred famous people? And everyday people really, every, all different walks of life. What is their, um, best case scenario. Okay. Would they want to be funded to research? Um, what would they want to do? So where do we want to spend this money? Right? The dream machine is like, Oh, does I, I would love to do an off planet remote viewing, <laughs> um, database where we look at other planets and get a hundred remote viewers to look at, um, Mars or something else, but you could, you could, you could do anywhere really and have a hundred people go there. They're obviously not visiting there. So what do they see and see again, using machine learning or AI, what is the, um, what is the summation? Can we make any conclusions? So that would be one idea. Someone might say, okay, we want to fund a, um, matchmaking system. Okay, so how would we want to collaborate with extraterrestrials um, on certain things, on healing, on um, products, right? We're already doing that. So what would be the types of things where we would want to um, put money, put time, put research, put effort between a human and an extraterrestrial if uh, coming together? Now, now who knows if we're, I, I mean, that's probably a bad word. I know Gary Nolan hates the word alien, but it's also like, what if we're extraterrestrials? We talk about this all the time. You know, we're having this human experience in this lifetime, but we know we don't die. We know we're not the body. Uh, so who's to say that we're all not ETs? Uh, and so that's one of the things we would love to do, a story scaffolding um, that's planet-based or star system based. 
So you get all the stories about the Palladians or the, uh, the uh, Arcturians, etc., and you have um, a knowledge base, right? Where you put those, you can go in virtual reality to those places, but it's really a place to organize all of our stories, our thoughts. There's a lot of people that are, um, you know, in the Arcturian camp. Well, what does that mean? What do they think? How do they see the world? So again, how we spend the money is very important and it would be interesting to see what would be the best case scenario. What would all these people do with the research money, with time, uh, et cetera? And what are our 20 questions? You know, we often have such a limited point of view that we're not even asking the right questions. Uh, and so maybe we have 20 questions that we have for them and top 20 questions that they have for us, you know? So how would we verify those questions? I don't know, how would we get them? You know, according to people that I'm talking to, there are is already direct um, human to um, ET communications. And there's uh, some research being done in Africa and other places where there is this back and forth. You know, we've been doing the radio research where we've been talking to ETs on ham radios, you know? I would love that to be funded. So there's a dream machine project. How far can we take this? Anyway, we're excited to go to San Francisco to the Soul Foundation to see what they're up to. You know, the government works in huge amounts of money and it's important that huge amounts of money are being dedicated to the curiosity research and optimal future of this new chapter in our lives.